All right. I, I was asked uh, to say this. If we can get 5,000 likes on this video, then I will create, or I will work towards, rather, a uh, 10 HP Armadillo Godsword Group Iron Man account that can destroy anybody at that combat level. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what we'll work for. So if you guys can like the video, that'd be great. Would really appreciate that. Today, we are honored to be in the presence of a mighty YouTube RuneScape figure here, Mr. Kempus Q. How you doing, man? Doing very well. Happy to be here. Welcome. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, there's been uh, recently, in fact, I think yesterday, there was a new blog post that was put onto the front page of the RuneScape website, and uh, it came out a few weeks back. I think it was in one of the uh, the old school RuneScape Q and A's that they do, where I think it was Mod Sween officially announced that the Duel Arena was going to be no more, and they're planning on gradually getting rid of it. Now, Kemp, you're probably the best person we could have on to talk about this because I mean, you you literally have a YouTube video with over two million views, specifically talking about the Duel Arena. Um, but before we get into that, I guess we should probably do a Q and A, man. So, how are you? What have you been up to, Kemp? Hey, yeah, doing really well. Uh, I've just been working full time on my YouTube channel the last, I think it's been seven months now. Uh, I was able to quit my job. In m many thanks to the Duel Arena scammers, actually, because exposing their death threats and the whole controversy around the Duel Arena. It really propelled my YouTube channel into basically double the size it was. Uh, so I really have them to thank for <laughs> all my research. Very pog. And me being able to quit my full-time job uh, I was working at and, and pursue YouTube full-time. So yeah, I'm over the moon. Um, and I continue making other videos about my RuneScape adventures. You know, I have Iron Man accounts and stuff. So it's not just all about that, you know, that negative culture that surrounds RuneScape. Uh, I also... I'm hugely passionate about RuneScape. I've played it 16 years. And so for me to be able to document my progress on my accounts, is uh, it really tickles the nerd in me. And <laughs> I shouldn't have said it that way. But uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So I'm, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Yeah, so uh, going into college, I studied like tech-related field. Um, I don't want to get into too much specifics. But yeah, so I was, I was working kind of in tech, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I kind of sort of. <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. It was kind of on brand, considering I like to make way too overpowered low combat accounts. And so Ooh, when please. I think it was Fo that said on live stream, like, I can't wait to see what accounts you build. And at that, at that point, I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no intention of uh, basically going back and, and reverting a max combat account with an Infernal Cape and Berserkering imbued into a low level account to hit 58s on level 35s. Um, but, you know, Foe kind of pushed me. He kind of encouraged me, I, I felt like, when he said that. So I decided to go ahead and do it. And I took a lot of inspiration from C Engineer, of course, because he had made a video on that as well. Uh, but regarding Deadman as a whole, Deadman is definitely one of the, my favorite game modes in, in the world. Uh, but when we're talking about RuneScape specifically, it's what I enjoy doing the most. So anytime a tournament comes around or a season comes around, I am grinding that stuff out. And it's only been recently that I've been making more videos about it and really trying to uh, actually use my YouTube channel to allow me to continue making Deadman videos. Because before I would play Deadman and I just wouldn't make many videos on the grind because put simply, I just was enjoying it too much and I didn't have time to edit. Um, and you guys know how Deadman goes. You have a week to progress your account, and it's super grindy. And if you're trying to get max combat within a week, which is some of, which is the duration of the, some of the tournaments, then it's very difficult to do anything else other than just play uh, Deadman mode. So before, you know, I I'm not really been known for my Deadman content, but uh, I was able to hire an editor, and uh, he produced some really fantastic edits for me during the dead man mode and the last few videos I edited myself, but uh, yeah, I, it was wonderful to be able to play and then also produce content on dead man. So yeah, like I said, dead man's some of the most fun content uh, that I've ever played in, in RuneScape. Oh, quick oh, question, yeah. quick question. So uh, you have had experience um, hiring people to edit for you. And um, was there like any, you know, concerns, but, but was the concerns allevi alleviated when you got the products from your, you know, the person you hired? Sure. So 
I think for the editors I've hired in the past, I have based based on their talent and their experience in the industry, I have paid them according to that. So I, you know, the hourly rate that I pay them. Um, first of all, I don't really go off hourly rates. I usually just tell them charge me whatever you like, and then. If it's too much, then I might consider using a different editor in the future. And if it's too little, then I can tip according to what I think the editor deserves. Um, and people have never overcharged me. I, you know, I, I like to pay. I like to pay my editors because at the end of the day, I am getting sponsored, um, and you know, I'm getting paid by sponsors. I'm getting paid by YouTube ad revenue. So I like to make sure my my editors that are helping me produce the video are well compensated. But in terms of the product itself, usually it's always been amazing. And if it's not good, then that was a fault. Like that was my problem because I wasn't specific enough with the requirements that I that I wanted them to have. So if yeah. the if what they finished wasn't like what I wanted, then that that's my fault because I wasn't specific enough about what I wanted. So whenever I start a new project with an editor, I'm always I always try to give them like a lot of guidance. Um, about what I want, but then I also leave room to breathe for them to have that creative freedom. Because at the end of the day, I'm paying for their creative expertise, where I lack. Like I'm, I'm horrible at uh, co coming up with the the ideas that they have when they want to convey information through video. Uh, they have all that creative expertise, and ultimately, that's what I'm paying them for. So, no, it's it's not really. I've never really experienced that where they give me something that I don't that is, just needs to be completely thrown out. Uh, usually it's just very small tweaks. Right. <laughs> no, no, actually all the editors that I have worked with, uh, I'm very lucky because all of them play RuneScape. So they have familiarity with Ooh. what I'm, the yeah. concepts I'm talking about. And that <clears> may <throat> seem like irrelevant information, but it's actually crucial to what we're the nuance. Yeah. yeah. Mm. definitely i i agree with that yo kem i'll edit your next video if you want mate if you just <laughs> let me if i can charge you whatever i want bro yeah hell yeah sign me up send me the clips bro i got it, it might just be a one time a one time contract there <laughs> it'd be worth it though dude i'll be getting my monies out of those two million views from the dude arena scammers dude. <laughs> trust me <Yeah>. trust me <laughs> you really don't see it very often and um so the thing about that is no of course i of course, I didn't expect that. Uh, that'd be silly to expect. Oh yeah, this this video will hit two point five million views. I I didn't see that coming into it. Uh, in fact, I hadn't uploaded a video in I think a month since, like, so I I waited a month to upload my next video, and the one I'm talking about in particular was the I think it's called I anti scammed the dual arena scammers. I think that's the my most popular video. Uh, I hadn't uploaded in a long time, and I was. Just glad to put that video out. I worked really hard on it. I worked really, really hard on it. I probably put 30 to 40 hours of editing alone into what I think is a 20 minute, 26 minute video, something like that. Um, but referring to like the death threats and stuff, that was the complete polar opposite. Uh, so I put very little time into that video where I was exposing the death threats that were levied against me. And the reason for that was because once I received the death threats, I didn't know what to do. And so I was, and this was like in the midst of isolation back in 2020. And it, it was, I was like depressed. I was really depressed. And then I had these death threats thrown against me. So that was like a really hard time for me. And it was just filled with so much anxiety. And then I was like taking a shower and I was just thinking like, how do I deal with everything that's going on right now, like this is horrible. <laughs> and so what I did was I just, I just spun out a video in like two to three hours of editing um, is super quick. And that video, it got like 200 K views in a week. And then it randomly just surged up to a million. Um, so yeah, that was the complete opposite where I, I put very little time and effort into it, but basically just talking about my experience of the death threats, why people are sending death threats um, and stuff like that. So yeah, very different experiences there. Oh, sure. Yeah. So removing the dual arena entirely, I don't think it really makes that much sense. Um, so when I say, when I've said stuff like I want to remove the dual arena in the past, if I've ever said that, I don't know if I have, but the connotation of that 
is different from taking it literally. You know, it's like the connotation is remove the terrible aspects of the dual arena of which like most of the things about the dual arena are bad in my opinion. Um, so one thing, you know, the solutions they're offering right now, which is basically a staking cap until they figure out what they're actually going to do, which I think is a good solution. It's a good short term solution. But when they say like they're literally removing the dual arena, that shocked me when I heard Sween say that on the live stream. And then for the dev blog to have that statement backed up fully, I was like, okay, that's sounds a little weird. I don't really understand. Like they, they took they took everybody's opinions quite literally. So my my proposal is to have that staking cap temporarily until they figure out a new long term solution. And that new long term solution would be more in the lines of uh, two players can stake any amount of GP against one another, but they have to have preset gear. So it's very easy, you know, if you try to say, say, for example, take the last man standing gear setup. If you were to put two people with, you know, that default last man standing gear up against each other in the dual arena, then that would, I think that would be a good system unless, you know, other people have feedback for that. But I'm pretty sure that would be a good system because if you are just trying to make it 50-50 exactly, you're going to have trouble making it 50-50 exactly because the other person could just wear an Aram staff and they get that defense bonus from the whip. Or they just start barraging each other and free, like, you know, just do an NH duel like we see in the Oda Block tournaments, uh, the RuneScape tournaments. So, yeah, it's, I think that would be a good system because you wouldn't have any of those literally just gambling stakes. Uh, you wouldn't have that system where people could get so easily scammed. And it's more about skill rather than anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> What do you I think, guys think um, about that? Uh, you know, there could be something I'm missing about that, but that's what I, I honestly believe that should be the long-term solution where you get an LMS setup and then fight against your other guy who has an LMS setup as well. Yeah, I think um like I don't I don't mind the idea of that. I think that sounds quite fun actually, but I, I, I think probably like the most important thing here is why are Jagex exactly removing the doodle arena? Is in there hasn't really been like there there hasn't been a statement from Jagex saying why they're doing it, but just they're doing it. So I was wondering, Kemp, like, do you do you have any theories on why exactly they're gonna be removing the Doodle Arena? Because to me it just seems a little bit odd how over the years they've just always been very certain on we're not removing it, we're not removing it, and then just out of the blue, we're removing the Doodle Arena. So I was wondering, like, do you have any theories, and same for you guys, like, on why they're actually doing it and why are they doing it right now? Yeah, I do have some theories, and they tie mostly to the fact that in the United Kingdom, there are laws that are trying to get rid of gambling websites and basically enforce the laws better, uh, the laws around gambling, underage gambling, and so on. And so... You know, I'd like to think that Jagex are doing this out of the goodness of their hearts and, uh, you know, trying to solve the issues that exist at the Dual Arena, such as uh, long term gambling addictions that have started there, of which are thousands, uh, and the underage gambling that occurs at the Dual Arena. I interviewed a 14 year old kid <laughs> who uh, spent almost $1,000 on Jagex RuneScape bonds to go gamble at the Dual Arena. And so, you know, RuneScape. Jesus. So he he's actually a YouTube star. Um, he he blew up from making I think a a Jake Paul music video. It's very cute. It's very cute. He was like eleven at the time. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm sure it was his own money that he made from YouTube. But anyway, uh, besides the point. Without getting into his personal financial stuff, uh, yeah. So he he's you know only fourteen. He doesn't have the self awareness of a fully grown adult and. You know, even if you are, are an adult, it's very hard to control yourself if you have such easy accessibility to something like the Duel Arena in RuneScape, where there are so fewer regulations compared to, say, if you were to go to, to a casino. Um, you know, a casino, they have limits on bets. Uh, they, first of all, they check your age. <laughs> and also, they, they just have it so that you can't withdraw, like, I think it's 300 pounds or something at UK casinos. You can't withdraw more than that. Something like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. If I, 
But regardless, the point stands, there are so many more regulations and kind of obstacles you have to jump over in a regular casino, whereas that's not the case with the dual arena. Um, and I'm afraid it can't be said for Jagex that they're doing, they're taking away the dual arena out of the goodness of their hearts, because we would have already seen that many, many years ago, if that were the case. Um, yeah, I suspect that it's due to the law that they're, uh, they're tightening up and making sure that they're following the law in the future. The J mods that are working as, you know, in the old landscape development team aren't good people. I firmly believe that most of them are, and they have a true passion for the game and uh, maintaining its health and integrity. But it's simply a, the fact that the upper management has no connection and are just, they have no sentiment towards the players. They don't really care about the players and their 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 experience, to be frank with you. I mean, Otherwise, we would have seen so many changes to RuneScape already, but that you know that help us. Uh, but they, they, the upper management for some reason keeps the dual arena around, and it's been baffling over the last couple of years to see why they do that. I just, I just can't fathom why they would do that. It's very strange to me. But every single, yeah, it's it's interesting. But you know, the J mods I've talked to. Um, in, in private conversations, they seem to be, you know, they seem to agree with me that the dual win is bad. Um, and it seems as if the upper, like, despite most of the OSRS development team trying to talk to upper management and saying, guys, we need to get rid of this dual arena. It is horrible for the game. Over the last three years, upper management has just rejected, rejected that, vetoed any efforts towards that. And it's only been in the last month that they finally caved in and agreed to do something about the dual arena. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of conspiracy theories, theories about that, which I've talked about in my videos. But yeah, it's I'm really glad they finally come around uh, to do something that's good for the game. All right. So um, to answer Rick C's question, also kind of like, you know, to go on with what you said earlier. But the first thing is, yeah, I agree that it's probably due to legal issues. Because, or, yeah, or else they would have done it a long time ago, right? And it, and it's the most sensible. And yeah, that's pretty much it on that. But also the idea of like your, your solution, right? So I think what they have uh, going forward temporarily is, you know, the 10 mil limit. And they're also going to do presets. So they, they have like the, the whip one and there's something else, right? There's like some presets going on. But is that confirmed? I think... Yeah, I think it was on the posts. They said like they were gonna do some presets, like one or two presets or something for the demo. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I read something about the the presets, but like, so that's good. I think that's that's a great thing because that eliminates a lot of you know scamming potential, like almost outright. But but what about how much, right? Because like to me, I honestly see a ten mil stake limit being really really good, even as like a long term solution, because I feel like. What I've noticed with a lot of players is that, you know, I stream all the time. I talk to all these people and it's crazy how many people on a daily basis tell me like, oh, I get bored or I rage staked and I, I just stake my entire bank. And then I don't think about the consequences until it's too late, you know, because like when they rage stake, yeah. they do their whole bank. They, they go all in. It's not 10 mil. It's like 500 mil, one bill, two bill. And then, you know, next day they're like, oh, shit, I just lost all my money. And like, it's like crazy. It's devastating. I don't, I, well, I guess my point is, it's like, I think there should be a limit though, right? Cause like, cause like, I don't think staking necessarily is, is wrong. It's just like how much I think it's a really important thing to address is because if you lose 10 mil, cause you're, you know, cause you're angry or whatever, you can recover from that, right? Like, you know, sensibly, you didn't completely destroy yourself, completely devalue all the hundreds of hours that you potentially spent getting your money, right? But if you stake a bill, who knows how long that money took and then it, it just can go away like in, in an instant you know like is is should yeah. we have a say like should jags be responsible for kind of like controlling people's you know um kind of like craziness right like self-destructiveness right like it's is is that do you think that's an important thing to kind of stop people from uh from staking bills at a time perhaps you know yeah, so. so there are a lot of different lines you could go down with that. Yeah, I suppose it comes down to the fact that this is an MMO, uh, and it's it's supposed to be meant as a game, and you're supposed to be slaying dragons, doing quests, uh, raiding with friends, and to have a 
gambling element, like what is called the Sand Casino on the old school RuneScape wiki, which is sponsored by JackX, by the way. Uh, it's literally called the Sand Casino by, <laughs> by you know, these people that are sponsored by JackX. Very interesting factoid for you. Um, yeah, so the fact that that's in the game, which is supposed to be an MMO, is very strange to me. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and the fact that most of the time it requires no skill whatsoever. You know, 95% of the stakes at the duel arena are simple coin tosses, uh, where you go against a max main with a whip, or, you know, even if you're a lower level, you do D-SIM versus D-SIM, it's a coin toss. And, you know, one person might have 60-40, uh, but that's just a way to die at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's still leaving it entirely up to chance. And the fact of the matter is that the only way that the duel arena could go on without a staking cap, without a staking limit, such as 10 mil, for example, the only way that could continue, in my opinion, is if it was entirely skill-based, or basically entirely skill-based. Um, you know, you have NH stakers that use the dual arena to, you know, see who's better at, at NH staking, uh, at fighting with the three different attack styles, the overhead prayers, everything. Uh, and I think that's a very healthy way to continue playing the game. Um, as long as there's that element of, you know, they both have exactly even setups and it's not possible even to do that 50-50 toss up because uh, having that possibility just leads to all the problems we've already seen with the dual arena. Yeah, I'd, I'd be really interested to know the figures on how much bond money is basically staked at the dual arena, which is something they could definitely harness the data for. They will never publicize that because obviously it'd be... Yeah, that's bad rep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all, everybody in this Discord call knows, though. Like, we all know that that's happening where people are purchasing bonds, they're going to the dual arena and staking you know, potentially up to thousands of dollars worth of, of bonds uh, through just selling them on the grand exchange. So all of us know that's happening. Um, and, you know, people that watch my videos, they know that's happening too. But yeah, JGX will never publicize anything on that. And uh, it's a shame, you know, it's a real shame. Um, but yeah, in the, in the dual arena's current state, that's exactly how it's being used. And it is being used as a moneymaker by JGX. Um, I don't know to what extent. That's the question. The, the, how much of all their bond profit is going towards stakers that are simpl simply staking out the dual arena? I'm not sure how much that is. It could be 2%. Um, they are benefiting in some way, in some capacity, mm -hmm. but it could be 2%. It could be 20%. It could be 50%. I'd have to do more research and uh, look at, I don't know. I don't know how I would do that research myself, but... They have that data in the back end. We'll never see the results of it, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's my take on the bonds. Yeah, what, what's for certain is that they they were making enough profit that it was not worth them removing it, you know? But now now it's changing, right? So I'm assuming the laws kicking in, the, the cost of infringing those laws is probably way, way more you know, way more of a negative. So they kind of have to deal with it now because it always comes down to the incentives, right? Who makes these moves? The people at the top, right? And what are they concerned about? How much money can they make or how much money will they lose, right? They're going to make those decisions be, based on that. You know, there's a yeah. lot of information we don't know. And it yeah. could be the fact that the developers and the people that are on the old school RuneScape team have campaigned for the dual arenas changing for so long that you know, a lot of members of the old school RuneScape team are getting fed up and they're sick of upper management and all the horrible decisions that they've made over the years, because they have made horrible decisions over the years, uh, especially when it comes to budgeting and, you know, resource allocation. Basically, the anti-cheating team gets <laughs> uh, clearly not as much uh, resources as they need. Otherwise, we would have way fewer bots. Uh, we'd have way less Sir Pugger videos as well, which would be a shame. Um, hmm. But yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so that could be, you know, some evidence that we have to potentially back that up is, you know, we have a lot of JMods leaving the last couple months. Uh, Sween is leaving. Um, and we don't know the reason for that. I'm not going to uh, say confidently that I know the reason for that, but I will throw a theory out there is that he's fed up with upper management um, and because they're not giving, they're not giving, uh, the players what they need and they're not giving the old school runescape team what they need 
they're just so short sighted is my problem. Um, Jagex That's is so short sighted with marketing and investing in the game. Uh, we have so many bots all across the game. Uh, the anti cheating team, I think, had like maximum of one to three people for the first five years of old school RuneScape. Mod Weath, apparently, I you know I met him um, in in Leicester a few years ago. He's a brilliant guy, and I think he did an amazing job for what resources he was given. But it's a simple matter of the fact that upper management wasn't giving him enough resources, not enough team members, and that's why, for example, we didn't we could Jagex didn't even give the budget to keep the bounty hunter minigame around. Uh, you know, hire one guy for throughout for an entire year, which is so cheap, by the way. I mean, they could hire internationally and pay half the price of a UK salary, or they could hire, uh, you know, in Cambridge, they, they only pay their employees like 20, 30 grand a year anyway. Uh, so yeah, they could have kept Bounty Hunter around it. We would have it for the last two years if they would have just hired one guy to moderate all of PVP around the entire world, around the entire uh, game. You know, that, that would have been a great solution because if you get banned on one account, then you are very much inclined not to do not to break that rule again, right? Um, and the fact about Bounty Hunter is that there was only one guy really abusing it, one or two guys. And so if they had just allocated the resources to ban people that were abusing Bounty Hunter and the original Bounty Hunter, then we would have a thriving PvP community. But instead we have, I think this is the worst state PvP has ever been in in the history of RuneScape. Which is a damn shame because PvP kind of made this game back in 2006, and you know we are playing 2007 Scape. If only that community and uh, you know the mechanics of PvP were cultivated in a healthy way rather than completely neglected for you know Slayer, PVM, whatever. I have love for those things too, <laughs> but I'm going on a pure spam tangent right now. I'm really sorry. <laughs> But, no, you're uh, good, man. You're good. But yeah, I mean, they could have hired one guy, 20k. You know how little 20k, 30k a year is in the in this grand scheme of things. That's so little money. And they could have had a GoFundMe to keep Bounty Hunter around. That that goal would have been hit in like a month. Yeah, you know, they could have. Um, I'm afraid had a volunteer. Uh, literally. <laughs> yeah, they could have had a volunteer. Yeah. That's true. People, uh, people yeah. would have done it for free. Um, like, well, so. I, I do have a question, but just to chip in a little bit on the conversation we're having about Mod Sween leaving. So, I I don't necessarily think that it's a whole case of like you know he's upset with upper management. It could be part of the case. Who knows? But um, I I think that if you look at Jagex employees as a whole, there is kind of a trend which has happened over the last probably five years. I would say where people join Jagex more or less for experience. Uh, and kind of use it as a stepping stone onward to something else, which is better paying or something else they'd like to do. Now, the reality of it is, Mod Sween's young. I, I think he's probably like 27, maybe 28 years old. And he's managed to get into the position which formerly Mod Mac K was in. And it's like, you got the experience. If you want to go and get another job and get paid a shit ton more, you can do that. I'm sure um, there's a process. You know? Yeah. So, I, and I feel like there is a... There is quite an obvious trend, like, if you look at a lot of J-Mods who have started at Jagex, they don't usually stay for too long, and then they go and do something else, which is absolutely fine, they're getting experience in the gaming industry, but it's like, there's a difference between somebody like Mod Sween, who, and I get on very well with Mod Sween, but the fact that he's very young, he's got a lot of potential, he's got his whole life and career ahead of him, that guy leaving, compared to, say, like, Mod Ash, it, it's a non-issue. Like, I don't see a problem there. It's like, hey, man, if you want to get paid more, you go for it. You go find another job. That's okay. But it's like, when you start to see the old school big boys leaving, you know, like the old fish, they're jumping ship. Like, I, I feel like that that then is like, holy shit, this is rough. Like, we need to really look at this. But I, I don't buy into like, you know, he's leaving because of upper management or whatever. But that's just my personal opinion on it. Um, So to get back to the Doodle Arena, um. A question that I have for you, Kemp, is wh what is the worst thing about the Doodle Arena? As in, we've spoken a little bit about, you know, people buying bonds with real life money, uh, young people, you can do this at any age, you can go and buy bonds. What are the bad side effects of the Doodle Arena that you have seen? Because you have been at the brunt 
and you have been at the front of literally like a war zone between you and people that do this and try to make a financial living from it. So in your opinion, what do you see as the worst side effects from the Dude Arena as it is right now? Sure. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I'll I'll touch a little bit on the the Sween conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have I have a whole lot of respect for Sween, and I really hope whatever he finds in his his future job is fulfilling and and better. Um, you know, I I for my impression is that he worked really really hard at Jagex, and uh, yeah, it it pains me to see him go. Um, he had to be like the face of of basically the live streams a lot of the time. He was the community manager, I think, uh, and I think it was Matt K that was the product owner. So I think Quite a little different. distinction yeah. in, in the roles, probably okay. a lot of responsibilities were a little bit different. But but yeah, no, they were both the face at, of Jagex at, or Old School RuneScape at one point or another. Um, and so yeah, he had a heavy burden on his shoulders, and for him to for him to leave is is really sad. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know the the consequences of that or, or what that really means for Jagex. We could spin out theories all day. <laughs> but but yeah, uh regarding your question specifically um about the worst part of the dual arena, I would say it's the fact that there are these people there that have kind of created their own underground community where they get to send death threats, uh, they get to DDoS people, they get to hack people's Facebook accounts, uh, they get to send all these terrible hateful messages to people and they get away with it and the the simple fact of the matter is that <laughs> jagex doesn't do anything um they don't go in and, and scan the dual arena every week or every two weeks to go look at these people that are uh saying the n-word within stakes or uh scamming people with a rapier instead of a, a tentacle whip or uh you know bringing tank armor into a, a stake that's supposed to be you know, a fifth even coin flip, uh, they're not doing any of that. And so the moderation isn't there. And so you have all these people that for a long time, they were getting away with sending death threats to multiple content creators, uh, my friends, which I, I won't name, uh, not to, I just don't want to put them in the spotlight right now. They, they're probably sick of that. Um, but they, they got used, they got, they got in the habit, all these bad people, they got in the habit of being able to get away with that kind of thing. And so they were trained that they can do that and that they should do that, right? Because, you know, humans are very much like animals. We can be trained a certain way. And so if they, they're trained to be able to do these things and continue profiting off of, you know, all these gambling addicts and the people that they're scamming, then they will continue to do that, especially because it's their livelihood. Um, so I, I tried, I did my best to make my content go viral and get as much publicity about the situation as I possibly could, because I feel very passionately about stopping them, about stopping these nasty people. Um, and unfortunately, it didn't work until very recently when Jagex finally uh, decided to do something about the dual arena. But yeah, it was it was years long battle by hundreds of people, not just myself, but you know there were thousands of people that were upvoting those Reddit posts that you know people had been scammed at the, at the dual arena or uh, they had horrible gambling addictions. And I, I personally received, unsolicited by the way, I didn't ask for any of these, but I personally received dozens on, on dozens of testimonies from people that had gotten long-term gambling addictions sourced from the dual arena. I didn't ask for them, but I got dozens on dozens, I think probably even a hundred uh, sent through my email, sent through Reddit. So. Bro, I get yeah, it all I, the time on Twitch. <laughs> Every day, there's always somebody saying, I wish I didn't do it. Right. <laughs> oh, no. No, really <laughs> sad awesome. story, dude. Re really sad story. Um, I've had like a long time CC, uh, like clan chat member that, you know, he's been around for like years. And I, you know, I gave him the rank because I thought he was a great guy, you know, moderate the chat. But like he got into the door arena and the moment he did, it got real bad. Like, cause then he started asking people for bonds and shit like that. And then he's talked about yeah. how he, like he, he like couldn't pay for rent. I'm like, yo bro, like, dude, we, we can't, you can't like, we can't, we can't have you around like this, you know, like you got to stop. But he's still, he's still addicted to this day. Like he's still doing it. Is he, is he still a rank in your CC? No, no. I had to unrank him because there's no oh, way I could, dude. <laughs> I could, I could, there's no way I could let, let him 
have that power and ask people for bonds. But he Bro. like last week, like I I saw him again and he's still staking. Like it's it's Man, bad. It's really I, bad. I gen- yeah no yeah, dude no I think <laughs> never in a parallel no. in a parallel universe. You allowed him to stay as the rank, and your CC is now like a flowering no. CC. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, it's it's really bad. I mean, not to mention the people on Twitch that always, you know, set like, how can I get, how can I stop getting addicted to staking? Because like, I can't play the game no more. I'm like making Iron Man. <laughs> By the but, way, yeah, it doesn't I, always work. Best advice. If I can quickly just add on to the the question I ask, like the reason why I ask Kemp what he thinks the worst thing about the Dude Arena is, is because. They're straight up removing it, right? And it, it's kind of like, so, thing that obviously you say is the worst is, you know, the toxic community that is there, and kind of like the extent that they've gone to with death threats and, you know, blackmail and, like, really nasty stuff. And it's like, do we think that's the reason that they removed the Doodle Arena, or they're going to remove it? And it, it, it's like, I don't know, I just feel like that's a really important question to ask. Will we ever find out why they remove it? Because, you know, I, it, it, I think it's the important question to ask here. Because it's like, I, I feel like everything that you said, Kemp, is a good reason and worthy enough to remove it in the first place. But, like, will we ever know? I, I, I would like to know. I, I would genuinely like to know what the exact reason was. I don't think they but would tell they, us. They can't talk about it, dude. They cannot talk about it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that's something. I, th- I feel like every five years or so, or like after five years, something happened. Then like the J mods are open about it. You know, like five years after something happened, then they like they have this unveiling of some true thing that happened. Uh, yeah, that has happened in a lot of instances where you know something was secret for a long time, and then you know after a certain period, uh, they were open to talking about it. And uh, so yeah, I've. I think in five years, maybe we'll know. Um, but I think our hunches about the legality uh, like of keeping the dual arena open, I think that's a pretty good hunch, is the fact that they have to close it down because there are too many legal repercussions. Yeah, that one's, that one's the most sensible. So yeah, I actually never made my way into you know, these secretive Discord, channel, uh, Discord servers, but I did have contacts that were in these communities that were sick of they were sick of it frankly they they were done sitting in their rooms for 10 hours a day manipulating people and they realized the the long-term consequences that has on their mental health uh and their their friends mental health you know the people that they scammed and staked with they were like all right well this is shitty like (laughs) what am i doing to these people what am i doing with my life naturally they they grew this uh idea in their heads that this is not what my life will be you know like this isn't a meaningful way to go about my life and to make money, you know, because most people in the world, you know, you go work at a grocery store from nine to five, um, you're earning your money. And while you're doing it, you are contributing value to the society around you. But in, in contrast, these people at the dual arena, they're detracting value, you know, so 95% of people, 99% of people, whenever they're working a job, earning a wage, they're contributing value to other people. But it's very hard, it's very rare to to find someone that's actually detracting value and able to make money from it. So, um, you know, there there are some exceptions, mm-hmm. but, but these, yeah. these people yeah. at the Duel Arena have have found a way to detract value and also make money. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm glad that a lot of them have gotten their gotten a real sense of what's that what that is doing to them as people, and that they have ter- tried to turn a new leaf by talking to me anonymously um and and telling me about the details of the dual arena sending me screenshots of you know these people that say they're going to beat me up or something um sending sending me screenshots of that so uh, it was very helpful to help publicize the situation that was going on there but i never i never made it into the discord channels i I was only sent screenshots there is some kind of like underground network of these people you know it's not so underground i mean it's easy to join a discord server and and scam people with others uh, but it's it's just like it it would make sense to me if some clans were occupying the dual arena and that that most of those people at the dual arena were part of some kind of clan 
uh, such as Frontline or Reign of Terror or what what have you. I've seen, I won't name the clan, but uh, I have seen someone like tag their clan name as they kill someone else in the duel arena after scamming them. Um, and, and I don't know. So the thing about that is that they could be trying to impersonate another member of another clan. Uh, they could be yeah. trying to impersonate that clan because that's what they, cl- that's what clans do all the time. Uh, they try to like pretend they're part of a different clan so that they don't, you know, say you're, say you're part of frontline, uh, a whole, the whole clan of frontline, I think got banned for DDoSing. Uh, this was many years ago. Yeah. They got caught. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, they got caught cause there was so much evidence of evidence supporting that fact. So, uh, they all got banned and then I think they started identifying themselves as a different clan or something or for a little while or they would, I'm not sure, but I know it happens all the time because, you know, I think that's happened with Reign of Terror where they impersonate another clan just so they don't get banned or something. Um, so, yeah, I, I know it happens. So that's why I don't really, you can never really trust someone hashtagging their clan because they could just be impersonating them or something. Yeah. So, um, you know, you me- you mentioned some really good points about the fact that a lot of these like drama, right, that arises um, and it doesn't have to be PvP specific, but there's a lot in PvP that that are so concentrated in specific areas that you could literally have someone kind of specialize in just snoo- you know sleuthing around looking for the these like bad apples, right, and taking care of them. Because usually it's it's a small group that you know that they just do the thing, but it's causing so much impact for such a wide community, right? Right. So like. It's crazy to me that that we we have we know where where all these hotspots are, you know, to tackle, but they never actually have someone just simply looking around, right? And like just checking on them, marking them and then and then going through them, right? Cuz like for example, I'll give you a good a, a good example on Twitch. For example, there's there used to be a lot of um, you know, uh, uh I'm quitting uh, giveaway streams, whatever whatever, right? And and like anybody click on those, they 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 get hacked, right? But like what if you just had someone or a few people, three people even that just scanned our our web page. I mean, it's not it's not it's not Jagex that's responsible for it, but but just another example of how easy it would be to just have like one or two people go through that you know category and just you know shadow ban all of those because because that way they would effectively have nobody getting hacked from that, and it would be the same for like the bounty hunter stuff, right? What if you had one or two people that just consistently you know that had JML powers consistently just you know look around, observe the people that are uh, doing all those uh, what do you call those the the, the boosting Fishing? right yeah or, the boosting, boosting stuff right yeah 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 because yeah. yeah, like if you had those people monitoring it the whole time then guess what you would have a very healthy bounty hunter without having to go through the updates without having to change the up you know change the bounty hunter without having to like pull anything right it would have been such a much simpler and much more uh, effective way of dealing it with it it's simple effective and you don't have to go through all this like, oh, we got to rewrite the bounty hunter. Because every time they try, it doesn't do anything because then people just find a way to boost, right? Whereas if you just actively monitor, then you didn't have this problem in the first place, right? And same for Dual Arena. Just have one or two people constantly monitoring it, see, see what people are doing, observe the trends, you know, investigate, right? It would have been so much easier. I just wanted to express that because it, it's like so easy, but they don't do it. That's what I've noticed is that Unless they're getting re- reported, maybe, I don't know. Like, what's the parameter that they have? A hundred times, a thousand times? And then they might investigate, right? Like, I think they need someone that's professionally in the team who looks at these, you know? Because, like, it's hotspots. It's not like, it's not like you know, you got to scan everywhere in the game, right? Just like, Yeah, oh, they're on the surface, and we see yeah. them every day, and it exactly. seems so obvious yeah. on how yeah. to take exactly. care of them. Yeah. It's not I mean, like you have to invest. It's not like you have to figure out where to go. You already know where to go, because people make it so obvious on social media that like oh bounty hunter has this issue go there then you know like dory has this issue go there then but they don't go there they don't have people actively working on there something we'll see in 2022 is is my prediction if jagex doesn't get their crap together in terms of where they allocate resources budgeting for the anti-cheating team for example uh then i i predict a a very long uh stressful and, and nasty downtrend for runescape Agreed. Because it's it's simply been too long, and we've already seen in 2021, we have so many new variety streamers that used to be old school RuneScape streamers. You know, Sick Nerd, for example, doesn't play RuneScape anymore. Uh, he logs in like once every six months or something. <laughs> like, he he can't be bothered with the game, 
and we have uh like you know harry harry silver moved from old school runescape um there there are lots of other people that you know content creators for the first time are moving away from runescape and going into other games and that's because it's a simple fact of we had no content in the first nine months of this game that was truly engaging or sorry no content in the first nine months of 2021 that you know was compelling uh and we have had all the like the last three months that's when all the updates are happening which is very strange you know we have group iron man and leagues and so on uh but in the prior nine months it was dead <laughs> and so we're seeing the effects of that and i'm afraid that you know, if budgeting doesn't get, sort itself out for 2022, then RuneScape is just going to decline uh, because the content creators that market the game so effectively, such as Torvesta, such as Framed, such as uh, all, all of you, honestly, <laughs> you guys market the game so effectively through YouTube and live streams. And if you have no content to produce, then we will like the whole community will collapse. Like we'll get no new players. Uh, we won't have people be, you know, that are casual players be like, Oh yeah, yeah. I love Rexy's videos. Uh, I was just reminded about RuneScape by watching Rexy's video. I'm going to go play, pay for membership and go kill some, uh, kill some Ar armadil like, like Rexy does or Sarah Domin. Now you, you kill Sarah Domin a lot, don't you? So yeah, I, I've killed a ton of that balls, dude. <laughs> and the content creators are leaving. I mean, Bodhi, you know, I I, th I like to think how Bodhi, after the the Dead Man Mansions, he was so disappointed in that. I think he said multiple times it was his worst weekend ever, worst week ever, <laughs> Dead Man Mansions, <laughs> and uh, he's played Roller Coaster Tycoon for two weeks because of that. He didn't hop onto RuneScape at all, and uh, so yeah, human. I mean, he he that wasn't an explicit like screw you to Jagex, it was more implied, like, but anybody could pick up on it. Like he would, he was so fed up with them and so frustrated that he played a different game. And we're seeing that all throughout 2021 with different streamers. Like, you know, RuneScape has a very cult like following, right? Very cult like, you know, I used to, when I watched Chris Archie back uh, 2012 or 2011, I used to despise when he played another game. Cause I was like, Oh, you're, you're betraying RuneScape. But then eventually I was like, oh, I, I love his Amnesia content. I'd, I'd watch him play Amnesia. I'd watch him Modern Warfare and stuff just because I, I grew to love him as a person instead of the game he was playing. But yeah, RuneScape does have a very cult-like following. So the fact that we've seen more streamers move away from RuneScape all at once is very shocking because we are so cult-like. And then, and then to see them succeed, like Harry Silver and Sick Nerd, um, that's... I'm I'm so happy for them, but at the same time, it's it's a bad thing for RuneScape because it's being left for other more modern games. And so when you have RuneScript as as the code the programming language, it's it's they're built like the entire infrastructure of old school RuneScape is built on antiquated systems, which is why we have such problems that we're seeing. Like they it's so hard to get really good developers to want to come in. Because what they're learning is RuneScape. They're not, which I think is based on Java, uh, yeah. but it's like they're, that has no translation to other programming languages, really. So a lot of people don't want to go mm -hmm. in, learn this yeah. programming language that's only useful for old school RuneScape, and then move on and be completely inexperienced with, with another programming language. Um, so I think there was a case where they were going to move off of RuneScript into some other programming language, some other infrastructure, what have you. And this was a long time ago. Uh, but the decision came down to, no, they were not going to move off of it. And the reason for that is because it costs a lot of upfront money to move off of it and you know, kind of reinvent their, their systems, uh, which is a damn shame because they didn't know that they would have seen so much growth in old school RuneScape. Uh, and they, they basically just didn't want to throw money at the problem and invest in the, the foundation of the game. Uh, and if they had done that, we would see the solving of so many problems we have now, probably in large part related to bots. Uh, the anti-cheating team would have a much easier go of things. And because they didn't make that investment, because they didn't have faith in old school RuneScape, they decided that they would keep RuneScript and not try to switch off of anything else. 
Uh, so yeah, it's that that decision from probably ten years ago now that is having huge negative long term effects. And it's one of the examples that demonstrates that Jagex, all of their sorry, I'm getting a call. <laughs> I just canceled it. Sorry, uh, all of their short term vision is really affecting their long term profitability because if they had just made that initial investment, they would be so much more successful and in a much better position. You know, their employees would be much happier uh, if they had made that initial investment into switching off and creating a new infrastructure for the game. When I made like that video about the death threats and stuff, the you know people that threatened my life, they kind of got the the right idea, which is to not send me any more. Uh, you know, they learned their lesson because if they did, then I would publicize it, and the situation would get about four to times five, four to five times more visibility than it had before. Um, so I haven't actually received a death threat for, I think, eight months, eight months or so. Um, so that's, that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I am very careful about what I show because RuneScape has a very unique community in that a lot of these people that have come together and they, I don't know, it's, there's a lot of weirdos out there, man, like in the internet in general, but RuneScape has a very unique community in that they actually like go to people's houses. They actually like call people's moms or hack their mom's Facebook accounts. Like they actually go through <laughs> with these things rather than, yep. you know, the casual, like, you know, you're playing, uh, playing in a lobby on, on call of duty or something. And all these people say ridiculous things that they're never going to do. But these runescape weirdos, they, they actually do some of these things. So yeah, I, I have been, careful i would say I, i'm not living in fear i live a very awesome life and I, i'm very happy with how things are i'm not living in fear but at the same time i'm, I'm very cautious i don't try to uh, leak anything that doesn't need to be leaked so yeah it's very very cutthroat it's very cutthroat so all these malicious people that play the game to exploit these naive innocent people at the duel arena or just in general standing at the grand exchange that wearing a tebow uh you know if you can be exploited, there's someone that wants to exploit you. And so if you have so much supply, so much opportunity in order to scam, you're doing everything you can to basically destroy the competition. And we see this very viciously at the Duel Arena in particular, where there are, you know, maybe maybe 30 people at the Duel Arena occupying 150 accounts. There's probably a lot more than that. But, you know, a lot of them are on these discord servers with one another uh that doesn't mean they like each other they could despise each other but they're in the same community because there are benefits to joining that server for rwt purposes or what have you or understanding the latest scam or the the latest exploit the latest bug that's occurring in the duel arena something like that so there are benefits to like having some kind of connection with these people but you could also they could also despise each other. And a lot of them do despise each other, regardless of how similar they are in character. They they hate each other. And the reason for that is because competition. So a lot of the time, uh, people at the Duel Arena will send the account usernames of their competition of other scammers to the JMods to get their accounts banned. And that happened to such an extent with Mod Weath and another JMod that was working on the anti-cheating team that they just got sick of it. They were so tired of all these reports coming in and they couldn't be sure if they could trust the reports because they didn't know if, if they were actually malicious people or uh, you know, the person that was reporting it was sending it for malicious reasons or whatever. So they were getting all these reports from, from these bad people and they didn't know which ones to trust. So eventually they just stopped look like the mods just stopped looking at them because <laughs> like either they didn't have the bandwidth. I, I'm not blaming them at all. I I understand they didn't have the resources they needed, but um, but yeah, that, so that'll happen a lot of the time. It's very cutthroat where they they try to DDoS each other or send in reports uh, a list of usernames. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty savage. I I got kind of like a really old story, right? So this was God. I think this was over easily over ten years ago. So. This was back when the trade limit was in the game, so you couldn't even trade like your friends any money. It was like 30k or whatever. And um, this was back, way back in the day with private servers, where YouTubers used to upload private servers and stuff like that. And uh, like 10 plus years ago. 
And this was back when it was like super bad. Like pretty much every server was just ratted or it would do eventually. It was just a bad time. And being very naive at the time, I decided to play one of these servers. And uh, about a week later, I remember my um, notepad. I was playing RuneScape and my notepad just opened up and somebody started typing to me on my screen. And they were they literally just put an IP address and then like the TeamSpeak server. And I was just like, oh my fucking God. Because I couldn't log into my account. And um, I got onto the server, and this is back when I, I was a naive. I was naive to private servers, but I was in PK clans, right? So like, I kind of understood what was going on here. I wasn't stupid, but I was at the same time. And uh, the guy that I was talking to, he was like, "All right, mate." He's like, he was a Canadian guy. He was like, "I'm on your account right now. You're stood outside Bandos." He's like, "I want you to give me your bank pin so I can get a <laughs> screenshot for this hacking website." Like he he was straight up. He was like, "I want your I want your bank pin so I can get a screenshot of your bank and your account and like post it to a forum, to basically of like his trophy hacks, right?" Uh. And I was just there in Teamspeak, and I'm just like, I was like, "Fuck you, dude!" I was like, "There's no way I'm giving you my fucking pin." I was like, "Are you fucking high?" And we we spoke for ages, right? And he was just like, it basically came down to like there was like an extra ten mil in the bank. And he had like 50 mil worth of gear on him anyways. And I was just like, do you know what? I was like, fuck it. I was like, sure. I gave him the bank pin because we spoke for like two hours and I was just. <sighs> no, but we, we, we spoke for a good amount of time and we had a mutual understanding. And um, he took the screenshot. He closed the uh, bank and he logged out and just gave me all my stuff back straight up. What? And, um, yeah, this guy, and I'm not going to say what his name is, <laughs> but he had made hundreds of thousands hacking accounts. And yeah. um, the last time I heard about this guy, I'm pretty sure he still does it today. And I think that he was big behind a lot of the RuneScape phishing scams. But, like, he was cool to me. Like, he literally just said to me, he was like, bro, like, do not play private servers. And if this shit ever happens, he was just like, join my team speak, come and talk to me, and I'll sort it all out for you. And, um, like, a few years down the line, he was in my clan. But he, like, this is the thing, like, we're talking about, like, gangster clans and stuff. And, like, if there's ever real money on the line, clans are going to be all over it. If they If they have numbers and they can organize a way to get that money like dead man mode or whatever it is or a glitch or a dupe or revenants they're gonna do it but from my experience in the clans i was in it wasn't really like that but then i wasn't in like super shady clans now i will preference what i'm about to say with back in the day when i used to pk if you didn't have somebody in your clan who could ddos then your clan died it was as simple as that every clan i was in that didn't have Dude, I'm I'm not I'm not kidding because like here's the thing like there were clans back in the day that were super malicious and they would just DDoS whenever they could and they were the scum of the earth like you did not want to be in that clan but then you had other clans that would fight with honor but if one of their boys got DDoSed they would DDoS straight back and it was more or less like an insurance policy of like hey we can do it too but we want to have a fair fight regardless I remember two accounts that I saw and. In my mind, when you say gangster shit, this is what comes to mind. I'll just tell these stories real quick. So this one time, I remember I was in a team speak with these two guys, and they spotted somebody at Mage Bank PKM with a red party hat. And uh, back in that time, the red party hat was like 1.2 bill, I think, back in pre-OC. And um, like the next thing I know, like literally screenshot in the team speak of the red party hat, like they DDoSed the guy and got him. And... Um, wow. It was just done like that, dude. Like, they just went and snatched that off that man's head. And then there was this other time, I remember there was a guy in the clan who was so rich. Like, rich beyond anybody's business. Like, he, he shouldn't have been that rich. Nobody really understood how he was. And then one day, he, um, he invited me into a call, and he basically showed me what was happening. So what he did was he would rent his accounts to, like, a website where he would rent a max account to a website, somebody would purchase it for like two hours, and then they would go and stake at the Doodle Arena, okay? And what he would do was he would rent his account out until he saw his account stake in party hats. And then as soon as he saw them stake in party hats, he would take them offline, 
log in on the account and would have like a party hat set. And I, I literally watched him do it and he logged Ooh. into the account with two full party hat sets. Like literally went from nothing to just bills. Like in, in literally wow. like 10 minutes. Yeah. That is like, insane. Like, I, 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 will, I will say this, dude. Like DDoSin, I personally think is like some of the scummiest shit ever. I don't stand by it at all. It's cowardly. And like anybody that I've been DDoSed in the past. And like, dude, hold up. I got one last fucking story to tell you, right? This was back <laughs> when I ran my own single clan way back in the day it was a cringe clan called team resurrection it was awful but anyways we we had about 20 members it was like 20 of my pk buddies from singles right and i ran the clan with a friend of mine called uh i think it was dandy i think it was dandy one two three and um basically dandy was an idiot dandy just fucking left his shit everywhere everybody knew his ip address because dandy didn't give a fuck he was just terrible with that shit and like Back in the day, if you're in a clan, you had to IP change like every half a day. Like you just IP changed all the time. You reset your router. If you can't, if you couldn't, you'd have to change okay. it because you got you got like static and dynamic uh, IP addresses. Like we knew about that shit way back in the day. And um, one day I was like, okay, Dan, I was like, look, you play on my account. We had a hybrid running. It's like a 20 versus 20, 20 hybrids running into each other, had a fight. And it was against uh, a rival clan, right? And uh, I was like, Dandy. You can go on my account, I'll go on your account. And uh, we go for this run-in, and instantly, because I'm on his account, and they know that he's an idiot, and they know they have his IP address, they instantly DDoS him. So I have all of these guys, like, fought in on me, in-game, spamming, like, you know, good fight, good fight, you know, RIP, and all this shit, like, shit-talking, expecting Dandy, the account I was on, to just drop and die, and I'm just sat there, like, completely in the game, just, like, tanking the TV they'd thrown on me, and I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots, what do you think you're talking about? There you go. Where, like, my friend was on my account, completely DC'd, and he just logged out, because no one went for him. But yeah, sorry, I went on a mad tangent, but, yeah. Yeah, no, that's very shit. interesting, yeah, and that's some very interesting stories. All of the gambling will go somewhere else i mean it, it will be spread out the fact of the matter is that the dual ring is so accessible and it's immediately trusted by its users uh, and if you take away the jagex being the platform for gambling then suddenly people have an extra hoop to jump through they have to trust the people that they're giving their money to before they even start gambling right um, you know, you saw with flower poker or dicing before people had to trust those people first and then they could they could gamble. Uh, another thing about that is that uh, scamming or. Well, scamming will be still easy to do, but there will be less there will be a funnel of people that the funnel will basically just decrease like th there will be mm -hmm. less people that are being introduced to the concept of gambling in RuneScape because the platform that Jagex is hosting for it will be completely eliminated. Um, you know, you'll still have free trade and stuff, but you'll have less people gambling because Jagex isn't, isn't like directly contributing to that. Do you know what I mean? Like the biggest thing about like addictions is that the easiest way to not get into it is to never do it in the first place. And now they don't have uh, an easy platform. Well, in the future, you know, they don't have an easy platform to start. So therefore, the chance will be astronomically lower. You know, you'll have still like lower. the old veteran. You know, they'll, 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 you'll have the veteran people that do it, but like that's it, right? Like, and then it'll be very, very unlikely that new people will will give the first shot. You know, try their first first gambling activity in the game. So, yeah, I agree, and I'm really glad of that. You know, people think that the dual arena going away won't change anything. It will. Like anybody that studied marketing will understand Absolutely. that if you decrease the size of the funnel or you make it harder to engage in an activity, the amount of people that will show up to do that will like just it'll if not have it, it'll it'll like turn into a fraction of what it was before. For yeah. sure. It's just it's just like obvious, you know? All of that, like the flowers and dice and it's not gonna be that's just not gonna be a thing. Because Jagex have banned it in the past, and I'm pretty sure it still holds up to be banned now. So it's like, how are they gonna do it? Chances are, oh, dude, a hundred. Uh, it'll dude, be a small time like, operation, you know. Mate, it's still if it's something right now. Yeah, in old you know, school RuneScape. Yeah, yeah, people are advertising it at the Grand Exchange, uh, the Lumbridge Teleport Spot. So didn't they it's change? Still happening, 
But Didn't they change the flower mechanic so you can't do it, though? Or are you talking not... about Dyson? Because they changed flowers so you could no longer do flowering. Like, they made well, it so it's always the same color. They don't show... They basically... The gambling bots, they don't show the result. So it's not like flowering. It's just like, here's oh. what you roll. Ah, okay, um, so you're talking about the bots that are like... The bots. Like, there is no virtual dice or yeah, anything. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's... Jagex will just have to deal with that, I guess. It's significantly less amount of people will take their their gambling scams and you know just gambling in general to the grand exchange uh they'll take it to lumberage teleport spot uh they'll i think they'll really focus on pvp worlds i'm giving them all these ideas i shouldn't be doing that <laughs> <laughs> PvP worlds are good because the people that go there uh sometimes they might get they might get unlucky or they'll die for like 20 mil You've seen it in a Torvesta in framed videos all the time. You know, those guys die for 20 mil. They get really unlucky, get hit really hard or something. And then uh, they go to the duel arena to go make their money. Um, so that's a very common phenomenon throughout a lot of PKers in RuneScape is they'll, they'll want to go gamble and just like, you know, leave it to chance. Uh, so that's where a lot of the gambling hosts will go. Um, but it will be significantly reduced, uh, the amount of people that are hosting gambling and the people that gamble ultimately because it's so much easier to track that kind of thing where if people are typing like uh you know 55 times two gambling or whatever you know just like rolling a dice or something if they're if they're typing that in the runescape chat i hope that jagex has like automated detection systems to to be able to ban those people that are hosting the gambling because it is against the rules uh, yeah. So I, I hope they'll invest a lot of money into making it not financially, uh, just making it not profitable at the end of the day. Because if you have to pay bond money in order to bond one of these gambling bots, then uh, and then you get banned, then you're going to lose money. Like in the past in pre-OC, like this whole scenario basically happened and like flowering and dice and became a thing. And um, like Jagex back then just outright banned it. And like you just didn't see it. It's like if somebody was, you know, trying to flower a dice or whatever, it was just insta ban. And I feel like if Jagex kind of lay the law down with that, it's like, are people really going to want to risk their their money with something where whoever they trade the money to, they could just get banned, like you know, mid stake or whatever? Yeah, this, I don't know. This relates to our topic of conversation earlier. It's it's all about. I think October might even be the month where they confirm their budget for 2022 and if they allocated enough budget to the anti-cheating team in order to tackle these problems of people gambling or scamming then we will see that removed from the game basically in 2022 but if they didn't allocate budget towards that particular problem then it will continue and it'll get really bad because especially because the number one source of well arguably the number one source of rwt and then pretty clearly the number one source of scamming and all that kind of thing and, and gambling of course uh that that's getting basically collapsed kind of like liquidated into all these other avenues where people are going to the grand exchange and stuff so it really just comes down to whatever they agreed for the budget to be for 2022 which they might have decided this october um, but who knows so i think the number one issue that jagex faces like the source of most of their issues is the account security that they have because thousands of accounts and i've actually been sent a txd document of all the usernames and passwords of hacked accounts thousands thousands of them and these hacked accounts are being sold to botters they're seeing they're being sold with pmod status uh to lure lurers that want to leverage the pmod status to lure people for their twisted bows or scythes or whatever uh, and make many thousands of dollars more than they could with a regular account. Um, and because these are all higher level accounts, number one, they have the ability to be very profitable through through botting Zolra or through botting Vorkath or whatever. And then, you know, usually there's that huge uh, cost of building that account up, you know. It requires a lot of time to build that account up and for it to not get banned while maybe you're botting it or uh, maybe someone's training it for you. Um, so that cost is nothing when you have thousands of these hacked accounts 
being distributed across all the rule breakers in the game. Uh, these accounts are being used for botting, like I mentioned before. They're being used for luring. They're being used for uh, dual arena staking accounts. And so it's very easy for these people to get their hands on these accounts when account security is so, so bad. Uh, and we see phishing streams happen all the time on Twitch. Um, and so that's an avenue for people to access all these accounts, which they can later sell to other rule breakers. Um, so. I would say that's probably the biggest source of the problems we have when it comes to anti-cheating in RuneScape. Um, and yeah, I, I would hope that they, re related to the budget conversation, I would hope that they allocate some budget towards fixing that issue. Yeah, it, I, I will add with that issue specifically on Twitch, I remember having a conversation about this with a JMod in person. I can't remember when it was. But they, it might have been mod, mod Matic here, I can't remember, but the conversation was effectively, they have no control over what's on the old Scroonscape Twitch um, like category. Uh, they've been in talks for a long time with Twitch themselves to try and get like moderator status, kind of, for like some of their employees in that category. Um, but it's just never happened. Like that's literally the only way is for people yeah, to have Runescape's some sort of power. Like they just, they just can't get it. So yeah. unfortunately, I, I don't know about that. Um, but a real quick, a subject that I would like to cover, which I think is super important, has a lot of potential, and we haven't really gone into enough detail about, is with the removal of the Doodle Arena, they're going to be replacing it with some kind of... In the past, we had Doodle Arena tournaments, and uh, I would love to touch on that with you guys. I don't know. Did any of you guys play that back in the day? Yeah, a little bit. I remember seeing Zazima there. That was really cool. I was very active in that and that um, mini game when it first came out. Now, please, if there are any JMods watching this, I beg you, do not allow players to go inside of that mini game with their own gear. It doesn't work, and it's going to be dead content. It's going to be just over so fast because probably the biggest, probably the biggest issue with it in the past. And I'm not even joking. Dude, arena tournaments were fun. Because you actually were able to use skill in order to win money, which was like, holy shit, that's fucking sick. It's basically PKing, apart from, you know, you get solid cash. Now, yeah. the only trouble with that is that the Doodle Running is gone, and there's a lot of people like myself at the time that didn't have a Divine Spirit Shield. And guess what? You get to the final fight, you're against fucking Spark Mech. The man's got like a Divine, and he has like the most expensive gear in the game, and you can't hit him. Like, legit, that was a issue a real issue with doodle arena tournament I'm sure now, they'll, please. They'll, they'll have the presets Dude, for I, sure. I i really pray that we do have presets something like lms please for the love of god and um the only other thing that i can think of which was like a downside was uh like the amount of gp because there was like high risk stakes there was medium there was low where like it all depended upon how much money you wanted to like actually risk going into these fights like that needs to be fought out a little better because it was scuffed as hell back in the day. Those are my two things that I really want them to address with whatever they do. But I think this has great potential and if it's done right, it could be really good content. I really think it could. Oh, do you know what? Before Kemp, before you joined this call, we were um we were discussing something. So obviously group Iron Man's now a thing, and there's been a lot of controversy around the whole group Iron Man, Last Man Standing, Rune Arrows. So I was just wondering, like, how do you feel about it, man? Yeah, uh, so I think people should be able to be rewarded for their skill. And the maximum amount of money I think you can make is about 600k per hour. Yeah. Uh, as a, You know, you have to have 48 hours of game time before you can redeem any of your effort. And you don't get any experience for it. That's the yep. thing. So I think it's fine right now i don't i don't think it's a big deal um and uh, like experience is everything on an iron man account you know having money is not it's not going to be the the biggest thing like it's short about term it. isn't it yeah, it's, it's, not a, long it's a short term. term thing and you have to be really good in order to make it worth it you have to have i'd say at least a 20 30 percent win rate to make it better than doing the agility pyramid for example and yeah. 20 to 30% win rate when there are 24 players in the game. You have to be, 
you have to be really good. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't really see it as much of a problem considering the top 1% of PKers only can get, you know, uh, 600k an hour. So I, I'm going to base what I'll tell you off of a post that I saw on Reddit today that had over a thousand upvotes and effectively this is how it is. So early game cash on an Iron Man, typically your go-to is usually to go and do the agility pyramid. Okay. Now, I'm sure Rice Scout probably knows better than I, but I think the Agility Pyramid is around about 250k cash per hour. Is it? Well, there? I mean, the thing is, you have <laughs> to build up your stats to even do it. Yeah. You know. So. So there, moderate, there now is moderate. and has been for a long time an alternative way to make money on an Iron Man, which is by doing last man standing. You can spend points to buy rune arrows, which then you can sell those rune arrows to a general store for elk price. So, post that I saw today. The outrage was against there's a lot of Iron Man players, group Iron Man players that are getting these rune arrows, selling them to the general store. Now, as you can imagine, we're talking about it right now. I've spoken about loads leading up to this. Loads of content creators, solo mission, and so forth have done this method. The fucking dude, the shops are clogged. Like, if you go to a shop that doesn't have rune arrows, man, you've like won the lottery there. It's like you're getting 3,000 gold for your 20 rune arrows. That's fucking great. But like, all of the shops are clogged. So, what's happening? A lot of these group Iron Man are logging in on their main accounts and buying the rune arrows back that the Iron Man have sold. Okay. Yep. And then the group Iron Man basically continue doing that. And the post was basically outraged saying that it's un Iron Man for them to be doing that. Now, I have to agree. And uh, the other thing that they said was, why can you buy rune arrows from Last Man Standing and Dragon Bolts and you can buy like angler, blighted angler fish and super restores from the LMS shop? But you can't even buy flax from the Nightmare Zone flock shop. It doesn't make sense. I think I, like, I'm not gonna lie. I read it and I was just like, actually, completely agree with this entire post. But like, I don't know why it's like that. I have no idea why can't you buy flax from Nightmare, but you can buy rune arrows that sell for 200 GP each from another mini game. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I totally have a agree. With that. I have a controversial opinion about this, and it's that they should fix it. So they've already fixed it for a lot of stores. They've fixed it for the Catherby store. They fixed it for the Rogue's Den store. So you can't the the main uh, main characters in Iron Man don't have a shared shop. So you can't just like abuse this and you know sell yeah. ten Runeros, buy ten Runeros, and get the the most amount of Runero or most amount of coins per Runero. Um, so they fixed it for quite a few shops. Uh, they haven't. Oh, and also the West Artie Shop. They fixed it for West Artie Shop. They haven't fixed it for. Uh, should I say this? <laughs> they haven't wait. fixed it for the Bandit Camp store. Okay. I think okay. because that's <laughs> in the wilderness. Because that's in the wilderness, they should make that the only store that you're you can sell rune arrows to and have a main buy it back because it's risky for both accounts because you risk all of your efforts, all of your hours of game time uh, on your Iron Man. Because you have the rune arrows with you in the wilderness, and it's like level twenty one wildy. It's pretty dangerous. Yeah, uh, it's actually deeper than that. It's level twenty four, uh, and then you, on your main account, you have to have a lot of GP. I think about three to four times more to buy back the rune arrows from the shop. So it's dangerous on both accounts. So I think they should keep it the way it is, except for patch, patch the other shops that are in safe areas, and only keep it so it's in the wilderness. Uh, and that kind of is is pretty. I think that fits really well. Because it is like Ferox Enclave, Last Man Standing. They're kind of like PvP related. They're in the wilderness. And if you want to go redeem your full, the full maximum capabilities of what you've earned as an Iron Man, then you should be able to take the risk and actually go do some dangerous content. Yeah. I mean, it's something that a very smart individual pointed out in my chat today in my stream was something that nobody's talking about is that. These rune arrows is actually creating a really good gold sing for the game. <laughs> True. I, I was like dying when he typed that in my chat, man. I was like, oh my god. But um, yep. yeah, like that. That's that's like the rune arrow issue. And honestly, I think what they need to do is either like Kemp just said, make it so you know it's two separate shops for Iron Men and mains, or I would have no problem if they just went and allowed you to buy flax from Nightmare Zone, because I always thought that was ridiculous that you couldn't do that anyways, but apparently flax is a huge thing on Iron Man. I, oh, well, this update bad, was... Nightmare Zone thing was like years and years ago. That that was back yeah. when everything was super 
people are super cautious about everything and anything. So that's yeah. why even Flax back then was like, no, <laughs> we picked yeah. those up, right? Like, yeah. that's how he's pinched. Yeah, but man. like, another thing for people who are, and there are people who are going out just basically just having an issue with people who are good at last man standing, making fast money on their Iron Men through Rune Arrows and such. Like, here, here's just something to consider. Like, I have done a lot of last man standing on my group Iron Man. I've probably spent maybe, maybe five, six hours of time playing LMS. And that's five or six hours that I will not get back. That I got nothing but GP4. Okay. I didn't gain any experience or anything like that. And it's like, at the end of the day, I'm at a level with it where I can make like the 600k GP an hour consistently. Like, it's not an issue for myself, but yeah. I'm not really getting anything from it. Like, I don't get any XP. And also, like, to say it's overpowered, like, it's not overpowered. If it was overpowered, then you'd be doing it instead of complaining about it because you would be able to get those wins. But, like, the reality <laughs> is, is like, you have to be good enough. In order to actually, I thought you said you agreed with the post, though. No, I do. I I don't think that you should be able to um buy the arrows back from the shop. I got you no speak, problem. You're playing the devil's advocate, so like you understand the other perspective. Is that what you're saying? I understand it. Yeah, yeah I complete. Yeah. I completely understand it. But I yeah. also agree. I agree with what the dude says. I think you shouldn't be able to buy your arrows from your main and sell them from your Iron Man. I think that's silly. I do think it's against the spirit of Iron Man. And hey, like there are people that have been banned for doing the opposite, where they've been um like, say for example, there was no mystic rope top in the Mages Guild, and you sold your main sold that to the shop and then you bought it on your Iron Man. Like literally Bone Soul, the content yeah. got banned for that. Or, yeah, D Iron, sorry. So it's like, yeah, I I it should go both ways, you know? Yeah. But like I, I in understand. terms in terms of like people who have that skill set. Like here, here's another just like thing to consider, right? PvP is just so like that, and I love PvP. Before any PvP peers like jump down my throat, fucking love that shit. Wish it was more popular. Here's the reality: it's less than five percent to play it, right? Is it a good idea to, to take away and discourage people that are playing Iron Man that have no business doing PvP at all by taking away like the one activity and benefit they can get from doing PvP? Hell no. Just leave it. Just let them do it. If they're good enough to get themselves some rune arrows, let them do it. And then guess what? You got to spend like a month trying to sell them to fucking the general store anyways, because everybody's doing yeah. it. You know, it, it's like perspective, I, yeah. I got lucky with ours because we, we sweated it so hard. Like the first day I did like 17 hours logged in. So those 48 hours went real fast. So by the time we could actually buy the rune arrows, which I managed to get, I think it was 25,000 like none of the shops had any arrows in. If I go to Artie right now and try to sell one rune arrow, like, I'm getting one GP. Do you know what I mean? Right. It, it's yep. gonna be clogged up. But yeah, I think um, I, I think they should make it so separate shops in general store for mains and Iron Man, but please, for the love of God, Jagex, if you bend over for these people because they're whining about this silly little rune arrow thing, like, think about, like, it's not fair on the people that haven't used it. Like, this is how I feel about it. I feel bad if they were to actually make it, right, for real, and I'm not even saying this for my own benefit, if they made it so that you could not buy rune arrows on your group Iron Man now, I feel bad for the people who haven't spent their points. Because I don't need, and neither does my team, we don't need any more early game cash. We're done. We're good. We're fucking pimping over here. But there are people that are still getting their points. And that would suck to be them. True, so please, true. Th think about these people, okay? And it has nothing to do with the fact that <laughs> I need Dragon Ball Z and I only have a thousand so far. Nothing. Yeah, let's let's ignore that. Let's ignore that <laughs> one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, that, cool, guys. Uh, so I'm afraid cool. I've got a hard stop, um, so I should get off. But yeah, it was really great talking about the Duel Arena and the updates that Jagex are making, and hopefully 2022, uh, we ha hopefully we have a bright future ahead of us.